Hey everyone, Tujo06241 back again. Uh, this is my 33rd sports vlog, and today I am joined by the lovable loaf himself, everyone's best friend, good old Vinny Brown. Vinny, introduce yourself to whoever is watching. Hello, everyone. Yeah, uh, you guys should check out his YouTube channel. He doesn't post any videos and doesn't really do anything on it, but you guys should check it out anyway because he does have a few videos. and uh, They're fun to mess with. They're oh, fun to God. make fun of. <laughs> and as I said, this is my 33rd sports vlog where I talk sports. Yeah, so if you're looking for, you know, clothes or... or uh, Video games, anything like that. You've come to the wrong place. Although I do like to talk about video games. Anyway, we are back. He's here for this week. Next week it'll just be me. I know I promised you guys uh, a off-season video from that I, that I said I would do with my buddy Josh. And uh, that still will happen. It's just, uh, you know, things came up last week. It was a lot of, uh, you know, like I was very busy with a lot of other projects. Uh, some some things happened. I really won't get too much into detail, but uh, that video will happen. Only it's going to be on, like, the progress so far on the Patriots and the Lions. And uh, we're going to talk a little about that today because free agency started. That being said, let's get started. All right, let's start with some football news. Uh, NFL free agency started today. Let's start off with the biggest deal. Adama Katsu is heading to Miami for uh, on a six-year, $114 million contract with $60 million guaranteed. Now, you don't need to be a man genius to know that's a lot of money. Vinny, what are your thoughts on this? That scares the shit out of me, especially when he plays... Against Tom, think about it. Cameron Wake, Sue, just think about that for yeah, a minute. Yeah, the Dolphins definitely bolstered their D-line by adding Sue, but here's my thing. Look at the money they're paying him. That's going to be a problem down the road. They're going to have to restructure his contract at some point, I think. And, I mean, it's not that Sue isn't worth that kind of money, in my opinion, because he's a damn good, damn good player. Definitely... That's the best defensive lineman in the game, but is he really worth $114 million no. for six years with $60 million guaranteed? I mean... If Miami wants to spend money and go broke, go ahead. Yeah, whatever. I do think that this helps their defense. I think they'll have a better D-line by by a lot of, a lot of means, but if uh, if they end up in a position where they're not very good... They're not gonna be able to. They're not gonna be able to trade Sue because no one's gonna want to take on his contract. Yeah, that's why you you kind of think about it before you do it. And the Lions were prepared to offer him a big contract. You hear about that? The Lions were about to offer him a contract kind of similar, only fifty eight million dollars guaranteed. Damn, Sue! So you take an extra two million to go play in Miami? Yeah, and I think he actually has a better chance of winning in Detroit than Miami. That's just my opinion. You know, Miami's Miami's in a lot more uh, competitive division. Uh, even though the Pats really didn't didn't hit didn't hit the market very well today, but there's plenty of off season left. Uh, I, the Lions did make a move though today to replace Sue. They trade a fourth and fifth round pick. I don't know if it's this year's or next year's. Did you, did you I, find that out? It just I, said fourth and fifth round. Yeah, well, they got Haloti Nada from the from the Ravens and a seventh round pick. I like this. I really do. Haloti Nada is a great replacement for Sue. Uh, I don't know if he's. Uh, I don't think he's like better, but he's he's the closest thing you're gonna get. Only thirty one. Yeah, he's thirty one years old. He's uh, he's coming off his best season with the Ravens. I am happy with this trade that the Lions did today. I feel like this really helps their second secondary. Listen to me. This secondary. really, this really helps. Yeah, Haloti not is converting to 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 safety. We're gonna we're gonna get rid of James the Headache Ball. I feel like this is great for their front <laughs> four, and the and the rumors are that the Lions are gonna let 
fairly walk, which that's yeah, fine with me. Yeah, they might. They might, which I don't know. I think uh, I think if they let fairly walk, they'll have to uh, draft a D tackle on draft. They might, but not first round. I think I think their first round pick should go to a left tackle. I really do. Offensive line has been a problem for the Lions oh, yeah. for years, and they just need to they need to upgrade that. Jake Long's a free agent now. They can sign him. Detroit, go after I Long. I think they should. They can get him for real cheap. Like get him, get him for like one year, and maybe like with an option. Yeah. And and then just like you know, if he doesn't work out, you you just let him go. If he does work out, then hold on to him. You can hold on to him. You know, I I just think they need to be a little smart. They got the, they lead the league with the most dead money. They really do. They lead the league with the most dead money. All right, let's get into. The New England Patriots. They did not pick up the options on Will Fork, Revis, and Browner. So they were all free agents. And uh, about an hour ago... Revis went back to the Jets. Revis went back to the Jets. Obviously, he would care about money more than rings. You know what... As soon as they brought it up that the Jets were going to offer him more money, I had a really bad feeling that he would go back to the Jets. But I was kind of hopeful. I was like, you know what? There is a chance he might take a pay cut to stay in New England, you know, because he's got a better chance of winning than in than New York. But no, apparently, yeah, the Jets offered him a big contract, and now he's going to be making seventy million dollars, thirty nine million guaranteed. Over the next five years, actually, he's going to make forty-eight mil in his first three years. I mean, that is a lot of money. And if that's what he was looking for, then get out. Then the New England Patriots can—they can definitely spend their money better. But here's the thing: they—they they didn't pick up Will Fork's option, and they didn't pick up Browner. They didn't get Browner that that two million dollar bonus, mm-hmm. so he ended up walking. He's still a free agent as uh, at the time we're making this video. And what worries me is now look at the look at the Pat secondary now. You got Logan Ryan. I like Logan Ryan. Uh I really do. I think his rookie year he had like what six? Six to seven picks. Six or seven something like that. He had a good amount of picks. He was a good player. I really like Logan Ryan. Uh is he gonna be good enough to replace Revis? I don't know. He's only been in the league like two or three years. So it's hard to say, but you never know. You have Malcolm Butler, who was an undrafted free agent who came up big for the Patriots in uh, in this past Super Bowl. But here's the thing about Malcolm Butler. He made one good play. It doesn't mean he's going to be any good. Do I think he'll be good? I, I don't know. I don't really know enough about him. I hope he is. I hope he can, you know, he can be a shutdown corner. You know, and, uh, but... The jury, what I'm saying is, is the jury is still out on him, on Malcolm Butler. And with, uh, and then you have Kyle Arrington, and we all, and... we all know how Kyle Arrington is. <laughs> yeah, it, not very good. I, I know the common saying among Pats fans, and I think there's some Pats fans that might hate me for saying this. I have never, ever questioned Bill Belichick. And I'm not starting now. I'm really not. But I do think that, you don't have to draft a corner in a draft. For they sure. might have to. They might have to look at some secondary and the, and maybe a pass rusher. They are. They are. Uh, they are getting a visit out of that guy from Cleveland, hmm. that D lineman. I can't remember his name. But Percy Harvin's also apparently oh. set to visit New England. Oh God, I don't want that personally. You see, the thing about Percy Harvin is he'd be, he'd be a cheap option and he would be an impact player. The only thing I don't like it's, is. He's a bit of a head case, yeah, from what I've heard. That's the one thing. I'm... He's a, he's got a bit of an attitude, and you know. But the thing is, he's a cheap option, and he is an impact player. That's true. In the AFC East, there's a lot of impact going on here. That's true. The Bills traded uh, Kiko he... Alonso for yes for LaShawn yeah McCoy. for Lashawn McCoy, and then they signed him to a five year extension. Uh, you know, so uh, the Dolphins got Sue, and they lost Brian Hartline. So there's a lot of, you know, moves happening in the AFC East, and I think the Pats are going to need to kind of catch up with them on that. So signing Percy Harvin may not be the ideal move right now, but I, 
I'm sure Tom Brady will, will like another receiver to throw yeah. to. And since they're going to go uh, zone coverage now instead of man-to-man, I don't think signing Browner back would be the best thing. The best thing, because he's not a zone coverage guy. He's a man-to-man guy. But if they do sign, if they do end up getting Browner back, I won't be mad. I like Browner. Uh, I was actually planning on getting a Browner jersey, but not anymore. I'm thinking Chandler Jones, maybe Devin McCourty. Speaking of Devin McCourty, the Pats did sign him for a five-year. $47.5 million deal, and I am really cool with this. I mean, thank God we didn't lose him, too. Better call his brother Jason. Yeah, there's also talk of that, that they may get Jason McCordy. There's also talk that they may get C.J. Spiller or Reggie Bush. Ooh. I would rather have C.J. Spiller, honestly, even though they're both injury-prone, not consistent at all, but whatever. I feel like Jason McCord. Ray Hulu Jr. is not going to happen, though. He he already signed a deal with Oakland. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I personally feel like if we get Jason McCord, we'll at least have a decent secondary with him and his brother right there. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I, I, I just hope, you know, the Pats don't just sit in free agency and do nothing. Because there's too many holes to fill. Now, they do have the drafts coming up in April. Yes. April. In April, so maybe that's where they plan on on filling some of these holes. Uh, they definitely need a pass rusher, oh, yeah. and they and they can definitely use another some secondary, I think. But like I said, I've never questioned Bill Belichick before, and I'm not starting now. Last but not least, the Pats did make a move in free agency. They got Brandon Gibson. They signed him to a one year deal worth eight hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. I, could be bad. Could be, could be worse. I mean, they could have they could have signed him to a multi, you know, a multi million dollar thing, but they didn't. Uh, and uh, Brandon Gibson, for anyone who doesn't know, he was a receiver in Miami. I I I just don't see this guy making it to week one. I think he's going to be one of those players they end up releasing, but I could be wrong. It wouldn't be the first time the Patriots picked up some scrub and made him into a superstar. Yeah. I mean, keep that in mind. They've done it a hundred times. And who knows? When they lost Welker, you know, everyone was doubting them. They made it back to the AFC Championship the next year. They had some holes, but they still made it. So, I'm just hoping for the best here. We're going to move on from football now. Uh, we're going to talk some baseball. Hence, I'm wearing a Tigers jersey. This is Ian Kinsler, by the way. I only really, uh, spring training finally started. Tigers are doing really well. Um, they're, they've only lost, like, I think twice. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, I know Shane Green didn't have the, the best outing. And, uh, David Price, he was all right. I guess he's having some command issues. But Alfredo Simon was doing really good so far. Again, this is spring training, so don't buy too much into this. Justin Verlander looked really good. Um, Anibal Sanchez was uh, was pretty good. And uh, so uh, overall, spring training looking really good. Some of the and uh, uh, Yoan Assessment has actually hit a grand slam in his debut with the Tigers. It was nice as a, in spring training again. Uh, there is some news though. The Tigers released Joel Handerhan last week. Yeah. John Check, if you see this, you predicted the future, my friend. And that's a good thing. Yeah, he's set to undergo uh, Tommy John surgery. Again. What a waste. Yeah. Well, Tigers did the smart thing by signing him to the kind of contract that they did. So, whatever. It was a low risk for a potential high reward. Obviously, that didn't work out. So, Tigers released him. Joel Hanrahan's not going to pitch at all this season. Whatever. I'm still happy with the Tigers' bullpen, oh, yeah. which is kind of surprising because the Tigers' bullpen has sucked Recent the past few years. years, especially last year. Joel Hanrahan's not a Tiger. He oh, wow. never will be. He never pitched at all. It's done. Whatever. We move on. Okay, let's talk some hockey. Uh, the Red Wings beat the Rangers in overtime, two to one, last Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> Probably the best game they played. Fucking awesome, yeah. Oh well, I'm about the best game they played, but it was really good. Um, 
Applicator scored first to uh, to make the wings go up one nut. And it was in the first period, rather like in the middle towards the end. And then the Rangers tied it at one. No score in the second. No score in the third. They go to overtime. And the new guy, one of the new guys, Marek Zidlitsky. I know I was saying that wrong last week. I kept saying Zidlicky, but it's it's Zidlitsky. Uh, Zidlitsky. Zidlitsky. Jeez, it would help if I can get the name right. Zidlitsky scored the game-winning power play goal. And, uh, yeah, Wings won in overtime, 2-1. to one. Now, I want to point something out. Jimmy Howard played really good in this game. He only gave up one goal against a high-powered Rangers team. I went on Facebook, and I saw this. Of course! Luckily, there are people like this. I don't get why people want Jimmy Howard to be traded. Like, I, I don't really. get it either. Like, when you look at his numbers, he's actually having a really good year. He's having a great year. Go back and watch my rant video if you want all the information on that. Red Wings win. Good great, stuff. Great win. It was, a, it was a good win. Friday comes. Yeah, his birthday. His birthday last week on March 6th. The Red Wings got blasted 5-2 to two by the Flames. After going up to nothing in the first. Yeah, Advocator scored twice early with assists from... Henrik Zetterberg and, and uh, Eric uh, Eric Cole. On both goals. I'm not even kidding. Zetterberg and Cole assisted on Advocator's two goals. That was the only two goals the Red Wings got the whole fucking night. They collapsed in the second and third period. They were not cohesive at all. And, yeah, they got spanked 5-2. to two. I mean, losses happen, but it's games like this. You can't afford to lose. Now... Keep in mind, it was the Flames. It wasn't a conference rival. It wasn't a division rival, nothing like that. Unfortunately, this past Sunday, the Red Wings got smoked again. 5-3 to three by the Bruins. The team is trying to catch us for third place in the Atlantic Division. Now, the Red Wings... They have officially lost two straight in regulation. There's no more NHL team to do that this year. The Red Wings were the last team, and that's over with now. But here's the thing about this. It's like I said on Twitter. That streak might be over, but the playoff streak is not Is not going to be. There's no way I believe the Red Wings, the Red Wings are not going to miss the playoffs. They're, they're, just, they're too deep at this point. Oh, yeah. And uh, let, let's get more into the Bruins and the... Red Wings. Gustafson was just awful in this game. He was absolutely fucking terrible. He, he gave up four goals in two periods. He was just fucking terrible. He actually got injured. And now Mrazek got called back up. I, what a freaking waste. I mean, the Wings brought Gustafson back to be the backup for one more year because they wanted Mrazek to, to get uh, as, me, as much ice time as he possibly could in Grand Rapids. Because let's face it, we all knew Morazic was going to be the backup, the backup next year. And it doesn't but he's help. getting so much NHL experience now that I honestly think if the if Gustafson ends up going on like season-ending IR, whatever, I'm not going to give a shit. Morazic is much better than him, and I trust Morazic more as a backup. It ain't going to be long, honestly. Morazic is potentially, potentially, he could be better than Jimmy Howard. I said potentially and could. Right now, not so much. I think Jimmy Howard's our guy, and he will continue to be that. But I do like Morazic, and I'm very happy that this guy's going to be backing up Howard. It doesn't help that Gus's save percentage is a 8.97 against him, and his GA yeah, is Yeah, like Gustafson's numbers against the Bruins were just absolutely awful to begin with. They were atrocious. I, I, I don't know what Babcock was thinking, honestly. I really don't. But he put in Howard in there. Howard only gives up one. Howard only gave up one goal, but by then it was kind of it was over at that point. It wouldn't have mattered. Now it wouldn't the next matter. Night. They still would have lost four to three. Oh yeah. Yeah, last night, which was the day after they lost to the Bruins, 
the Red Wings kind of had they had something to prove at this point. They had lost two in a row. They didn't look good at all in these last two games. Well, they play Edmonton. They didn't really look that good last night either. Yeah, yeah. and they played Edmonton. Now, before I get into the details, they did win, five to two. Good win. Yeah, great win. I'm not mad at all. Here's the problem I had with last night's game. They allowed too many shots yeah. for Edmonton. I think like 36 total they let. They had Howard had 34 saves, I believe. Something like that. 36, 38 shots. I think Howard had like 36 saves or something like that. I don't know. That's too many shots given up for a team that was built on its defense. You know, this kind of stuff can't happen. Because if this was another team, a better team than the Oilers, I really think the Red Wings could have lost this game. You know, but whatever. It is what it is. I will take the two points. Uh, not a goal over who scored. Cronwall got the uh, got the first goal for the Red Wings to tie it up, 1-1. One one. Then Shane got uh, the second to make it 2-1. to one. Then Palkinen scored. Nice fucking snipe. The kid's got a hard shot. I love Timo Palkinen. Oh yeah. I want I want to see him back full time next year. I really do. If he keeps playing the way he is, and then I uh, I turned the game off after this because eye candy was on, and um, I figured the Wings had it won. It was like three to two. There was like thirty some seconds left. I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, and then uh, my phone goes off twice. And I see Advocator got an empty netter, and uh, I was like, you know what? Now the game's really over. <laughs> and then that's what gets another one. Yeah, and then and then my phone goes off about five seconds later. It turns out Datsu gets an empty netter. So there you go. There's how they got five goals. They snapped that small losing losing streak. Let's hope this carries over into Thursday. They play the Blue Jackets. Yeah, it's yeah, Blue the Jackets. Blue Jackets. They believe the Blue Jackets on Thursday. They play. Uh, Philadelphia on Saturday, and then they play Pittsburgh on Sunday. Let's just hope they can at least take take two of these games, you know, take two out of three, and if you're going to lose one of these games, lose in overtime or something. I don't want them to lose at all, but, yeah. I think they can win all three, personally. I think they can, too. I think they can beat Columbus, and they can beat... They absolutely can, but uh, are they going to Philly? I think they're yeah, going, they're to, going Philly. to Philly this time. Yeah, they need to snap that losing streak in Philly. I haven't won like since ninety seven. Since ninety seven, since they won their first cup. Well, first of four in this twenty three. It's gonna be twenty four. Gonna be twenty four year streak. See, so yeah, it's been a good long time since they won in Philly. They need to. They need to win again. All right, guys, we're gonna breeze through college basketball and then the NBA real quick. Uh, sometime last week, Michigan lost to Northwestern in double overtime, eighty-two to seventy-eight. Oh, uh, boo. yeah, whatever. Uh, and then uh, this past Saturday, they beat Rutgers seventy-nine to sixty-nine. I'm just happy to see them win. I re- Michigan basketball this year was absolutely just god awful. Hopefully, horrendous. they go to the NIT and win that. I don't know, man. I don't know. And finally, we're going to get into Pistons basketball. Uh, Spoiler alert, nothing good. Nothing good. You have been warned. You've been warned. All right, well, to start, Pistons lose to the Pelicans, 88-85. They lose to the Rockets, 103-93. They blew the game against the Hornets, and they actually, this was their sixth loss in a row, 108 to 101. They were actually leading in this game too for a majority. They just couldn't keep it, and they blew it. Lost 108 to 101. Better beat the They've Lakers. Now, right? Yeah, they play the Lakers in like six minutes at the time we're making this. They've lost six in a row. Things have got to change. They need to start winning again. It's like I've said in my past vlogs, I don't see them as a playoff team this year, but I would like to be proven wrong. I really would. Will they prove me wrong? Hopefully. I hope so. You can only hope. Okay, guys, I didn't. Uh, I don't have any shout-outs this week. I uh, didn't really have enough time to, to put any in. I knew this was going to be a long one. We got to go. We're going to watch the basketball game, play some Yu-Gi-Oh!, 
you know, whatever, I'm going to whoop his ass at dueling. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to drink this water. There's not much left. I'm going to drink it. And I'm going to piss like crazy. Anyway, guys, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, I have a couple deck profile videos coming up. It's been a long time since I've made a Yu-Gi-Oh video, so you'll have to kind of bear with me on it. But anyway, for Vinny Brown, I'm Justin Crumley. This is Cujo06241, signing out.